Mr. Renata. Hope and Missing have been incredibly aggressive when given the opportunity this split. Nat Callista left wide open. Renata, despite the nerves, I feel like it's still just going to be such an insane combo. 100%. And this is something that RNG, who took down JDG recently, were consistently banning up against them, not wanting to give hope that Callista. But this is also something that Juan Fong plays quite a bit. Something they should feel comfortable going up against. Typically, we do just see the trade of like, you go for Callista, we go for a fellow. Sure, you'll have more pressure early, but we can try and just have uh, better fights later on in the game. And it looks like that's what Weibo will do. Especially if you can index into a better mid jungle, uh, I could really shut down any type of aggression that Hope and Missing would be looking to dish out. Juan Fung going with the Aphelios here. It is his most played of the split, but actually a negative oh. win rate. Okay, Pantheon locked in. I assume that's for on, but could even be Pantheon jungle for SOFM? I don't know. His, so Pantheon on this patch had his Q damage to monsters increase. I haven't really been seeing like people pull it out, but I mean, who knows? We'll keep an open mind. Wherever this is going, if it is going to that jungle roll, that is exciting. And now JDG responding with the Ari. Ah, who cares about the Ari much with the Pantheon on the rift? <laughs> Potential for the richest man of Vietnam to cash it in once more on the Pantheon. We'll have to see if SFM does take that into the jungle or whether it will be down in the support role. Gwen going to be banned away by the, JDG here, trying to much. deny some of the strong top lane picks. Yeah, going to be going to be looking out for what JDG want to go for. I feel like JDG's comp with the three picks is still very flexible. Weibo are very interesting because I feel like typically when you see like something like a Pantheon, you wouldn't think of like... Aphelios in the same draft as well, right? Because Pantheon typically a lot more about like early game aggression, snowballing ahead. But one thing their comp does have so far is double globals and a lot of pressure to pick off people on sides and create numbers advantage. So I at least think Weibo's three picks so far at least index into a clear strength and they have the late game insurance policy of the Aphelios. And I will say so often Weibo will just abandon Huang Fong on the bottom side and go fight for Herald as a four man unit and let Huang Fong just take place, right? And, you know, like you say, Aphelios doesn't really lean into the style of a Pantheon, but that can work for a team that doesn't want to play with their AD carry typically. We'll see where JDG are going to go, though. Looking at jungle picks for now. Yeah, so far, kind of scrolling through a few. We saw things like the Xin Zhao left open, Lee Sin, which we saw earlier today, but that could be a little bit rough. And for JDG, considering that I feel like their comp can index heavier into 5v5 and want a bit more of a front line, I think locking in the Xin Zhao would be quite nice. There it is. So, aggression from Kanavi wants to get into those lanes. And he certainly has lanes to gank, right? Callista, Renata, <laughs> as well as the <laughs> Ari in the go, middle lane. Much, oh, let's go! Out his Blitzcrack once again. It's the Pantheon in the jungle. Weibo want to go in. And not only that, the Shy brings out his cannon. It's a 100% win rate this split over four games. And 369, mate, you're going to have your work cut out today. I love the LPL. I absolutely love the LPL. Weibo definitely coming in prepared with some strats. 369 going to bring out the GP as like a TLDR of GP changes. They tried to hit his early game, but kind of, you know, uh, like keep the potency and keep the potential of late game damage there. So we'll, we'll see if the Shy can try and abuse him a little bit more. But sadly, this top lane matchup was supposed to be the hype part of the game. I am much more excited to see SOFM, and especially SOFM and on how they're linking up, how they're finding picks, how they're working together, because that's what Weibo's comp looks like it's all about. It's all about finding picks, traversing the map as a unit, and just catching JDG off guard. Honestly, I have no idea what to expect from this game. We have a Blitzcrank and a Pantheon coming out from Weibo. And you know, a lot of people will argue with me and tell me that Weibo aren't a mojo team. And to that, I would say, look at this draft and tell me again that this team doesn't have mojo. Come on now. On the Mad Science, he's bringing out the Blitzcrank once more. We saw him playing this earlier on in the split, and it looked pretty good as well. Over on the other side, though, JDG sticking to what's been fairly stock and standard meta. Aside from the Zin Zhao, slightly a fringe pick. Uh, but 369, despite the nerfs, sticking with the GP. Missing, despite the nerfs, sticking with the Renata. Yeah, and like you said, JDG, very stock and standard composition coming out so far. Like, they have a solid 5v5. You have ways of preventing the enemy team from coming in from you with that hostile takeover. But also, like, are a little bit fluid in terms of picks because you have an R who wants to roam and you have the cannon barrage. So 
I think J JDG can be a little bit fluid with how they want to play the game. We said it, it's a lot on Weibo. Mid jungle support kind of being their pillar and really honing in on that bot lane. I am uh, extremely excited for this game, Lyric. It's Weibo and JDG. Uh, two teams that were powerhouse squads in 2020 and it feels like they found their form once again in 2022 you know jdg with the team that a lot of people were dubbing as favorites for the 2020 world championship but it was sooning that made it to the final in the end it was this weibo squad uh, with a couple of changes with a couple of differences it was bin instead of shy back then it was sword art rather than on but the core players of sofm angel and Huangfong still there all these years later yeah, Weibo having a solid foundation to build on <laughs> and now having a solid game plan to try to take down JDG and make their way up to standings. Again, we're going to be keeping our eyes on on the Pantheon and on the Blitzcrank. I feel like it's, you know, when you have the Blitzcrank, we typically expect to see a lot of action put around the bot lane because you are a very, I don't know if feast or famine is the right word, right? But it's like if you can find that hook, if you can get going, you could really just take over the game. Uh, and Pantheon kind of being the same. Curious to see what build SOFM goes as well, because Gore Drinker, Eclipse, uh, just a lot of different options that Pantheon can look to go in terms of build, depending on what situation the team needs, or if they even start snowballing, right? Maybe you index more into lethality at that point in time or not, but at least going to make his way up towards the top side of the map early on. Yeah, I am going to be keeping a keen eye on SOFM this game. Can I be though on the other side? Uh, an incredibly intelligent jungler, right? Always has been. He's this guy that historically would focus on the farm. This split, though, kind of changing his style to focus on the lanes. And I feel like the Xin Zhao really leans into that, especially with an Ari in the mid lane, with the Kalista Renata in the bottom side. He will have so many opportunities to get into those lanes and try and find advantages uh, for his laners. He's starting on the top side, so very likely that he moves down towards that bottom lane later on. Yeah, could, could see if he wanted to go for any kind of like cheesy early gank topside, but if he did, the Shy already has a ward anyway, so he would be totally fine. And when you are playing up against this Blitzcrank bot, you could just put like a lot of emphasis into getting vision around bot side, kind of making sure they can play safe, and that Angel and SOFM aren't just completely taking advantage of them. But on top of just kind of how we expect the, the game plan to go in terms of draft with bottom, bottom lane, I'm also just kind of hopeful that 369 can you know show up and make things work out in this top lane matchup but kanavi does want to help him out he does he'll get spotted on the ward though clears that away and we'll just have to retreat back into his own jungle so the shy impervious for the time being and knows that sofm is nearby right so can maintain the pressure in the top side i thought he was going to lose the cannon there but it looks like he will be able to move forward and grab that one sofm wants to go for the scuttle crab but kanavi has his eyes on this mid lane is set. Oh. oh, the charm from Yagao is perfect and sets up for first blood. What a way to start it for JDG. Yeah, great charm coming out from Yagao to make sure that happens. And Angel even used the flash as well. So not only finding the kill, but now setting up potential for repeat ganks to come through. And we, when we were kind of hitting on that Weibo's composition, maybe wanting to set the pace, JDG never let anyone else set the pace. When JDG are on the rift, they're always the ones looking for the action. I mean, we talked about the charm setup. I didn't expect it to be that good. You know, Yagao finding that perfect moment to punish Angel. And like you say, flash on cooldown now. It becomes very difficult for the Weibo mid lane. A big damage from 369. He ain't afraid of no nerfs. No, and again, some of the things that were hit from him, like uh, some of his like base HP and armor taken down is nothing. <laughs> Probably gonna come oh, from this. Forced to flash at the bottom side. I don't know what he necessarily expected from that hook, but apparently it wasn't to pull in enemies. So I'm not entirely sure what other options were available from hooking there, but it forces his own flash out. I don't <laughs> I don't know if he like hooked and then maybe thought like, oh shoot, what if Kanavi's here? Because we don't have vision or he could have walked through lane her but yeah, so now two members of the side of Weibo not having flashes available. Definitely giving Kanavi a lot of opportunities. His camp's coming up towards the top side right now, so that's where you expect in the path. And with 369 holding this wave pretty close to his tower, could set up for another gank to come out in the top side for JDG. Yagao already starting to get some, some vision up towards that side, so he can more safely go for some rotations. Yep, Angel dropping a control ward in their brush and immediately pings onto that pixel brush. They know where Yagao has dropped a ward right there, but SFM 
Don't know if he can necessarily just walk into that river with Kanavi on the top side as well. It'll be a tough one to contest that vision. And actually, a fairly slow early game so far, despite that first blood. Um, but I feel like, on paper, in my mind, that favors Weibo. I feel like if you're going to have a slow early game between these two teams, Weibo is definitely the team that prefers that style of game. Yeah, I think in, in terms of team identity, 100% that Weibo are more used to that pace of the game being set. In terms of comps, like JDG definitely later on will still have opportunities with the Gangplank and the Renata available to turn a lot of these plays around. And both teams heavily posturing for something to happen, but not able to find it. But look at where On is on the minimap. On has made his way up. And with the wave getting pushed into J to JDG, it seems like they're fine of being like, hey, he's fine down there by himself. Let's look for these opportunities. And he should yeah. be way more successful on roams than the Renata. Oh, the shy goes in on the top side. 369 stunned up. Takes a huge amount of damage. Won't be the full all in here. The Shy not going too far. Charm out from Yagao once again. SFM the target here. Shields a lot of damage, but exhausted. Chased down the Cannon Barrage and everyone over the wall as well. On knocked up. Damage out from the orb as well. Charm should be up shortly. On could be in trouble, but Yagao doesn't quite have the cooldowns. JDG just completely controlling the pace of the game so far. Looked like Guaybo wanted to set something up topside with the Shy looking for that all in, but not able to do so. And Yagao's charms. My god, Munch, they have been so on point so far. They have been so good. JDG really setting up. And Kanavi and Yagao just working as this two-man kill squad. Honestly, it's beautiful to witness what we're seeing from JDG. And this is their bread and butter, right? Finding the scraps, finding the little skirmishes in the early game, and turning those skirmishes into a win. Right now, already a thousand gold up over Wafer. And let's remember, this is their third year playing together, right? Yagao and Kanavi definitely yeah. having a lot of time to build up that synergy, to become that strong mid-jungle duo. One of the best mid-jungle duos in the world, I'd say, with how well they work together. Definitely one of the best just in the LPL outright. Like, we might have a lot of good teams, but not every team necessarily plays through mid-jungle like JDG are able to do. Kanavi? <laughs> Wants to move on to the Shy. Oh, no, the Shy didn't see it. He drops a ward, but Kanavi's already in the lane. At least there's a plate for the Shy, but I don't know if he lives oh, through this one. Here. The Flash forced out. The Shy will survive, I believe. No Spirit Rush available for Yagao, but even still, dicey situation for the Shy. Uh, and it feels like now is when we'd want to start to see things starting to come together for the side of Weibo. Not really able to find any pressure. They did try to move on towards the mid lane and start making proactive plays come through. But now with Rift Herald spawning and their bot lane having pushed, this might finally be the time. Yeah, SFM starts this Herald off on the top side. And you see On is there once again. But Wong Fong has moved over. We talked about usually Weibo like to leave an AD carry down in that bottom side. Not today. They're playing as a team. They're playing as a unit. They're playing for this Herald. JDG moving in to contest, but they're too late. It's already gone. The local gold taken. That 300 gold for the Herald now uh, will be in the pocket of Weibo. So JDG a little too slow to the play with the Callista as well. It's unfortunate not to be able to trade any players. Yeah, sadly, like you said, just too slow in that rotation. Looks like they could try and pivot this into an early dragon take for their side. They obviously have a Callista as well, so would just be very easy trying to secure this objective. But we'll give Weibo a window to where they're already coming off of reset so can get to those lanes to where JDG might be in a little bit of a precarious position with how long it can take them to take that Drake. Yeah, uh, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Be all right. The infernal Drake taken. First one of the game. And crucially, the tempo, once munch, again, the tempo. Think of the tempo. Think of the tempo. Um... I'm just trying to remember the, the dragon changes. I believe it's 9% or is it 6% damage on the Drakes? I'm just double checking. For, the Infernal. Infernal yeah. is 6 now. 6% 6 increased damage um, or attack damage and ability power. Not damage inherently. But yeah, big, big change. Big, big Drake to take for themselves. An ocean Drake for the second one. Does mean it could be the Hextech Drake Soul, which is uh, really terrifying now. Yeah, I mean, again, just... Especially if you can just stack up two to four of them in a row. Just feels so nice for your side to get those added bonuses coming through. So JDG going to be off to an early start with that one. And it looks like now they're going to start playing more towards their bot side. They have Cannon Barrage available as well. So it definitely gives them a lot of tools to be able to find an impact. Especially when we look at inventories, right? 
uh, Gore Drinker already coming out for Kanavi. So going to be able to survive and take up so much damage coming through. And it looks like they're already starting to get on the same page of trying to allow Yagao some freedom by hovering around mid lane, clearing out some of this vision, and looking for some ganks of their own. Yeah, I'm keeping my eyes on Kanavi in the short term. I was talking about SFM earlier because he locked in Pantheon, but right now, Kanavi is the king of the early game. Uh, putting so much pressure down. A kill onto Angel, a kill onto SFM. Angel does have his flash back up. We talked about the potential of an opportunity in that mid lane. Uh, luckily for Angel, that hasn't come to pass. But I love how On has just basically not been in the bottom lane this game. Like, every time I look at On, he's somewhere else on the map. He's trying to get involved with SFM, with Angel in the mid lane, and just fighting over vision with Missing. Yeah, but oh, both junglers are going to find each other. Yeah, SFM just stuns Kanavi, though, and kind of defuses the play, honestly. The Shite moving over to try and defend his control ward, uh, and will be able to do so. Apparently, Kanavi bullied out of this one with 369 pushing, though, and with SFM leaving the play. Surely, this control ward should be no more. But then again, doesn't feel like JDG are confident to actually go for that 2v2. No, not wanting to look for it so far. Especially with Slicing Maelstrom still being up for the Shy. Kanavi will be able to come back and look for that one now. But, I mean, with this vision, right, the Shy definitely not going to go down to any ganks. I mean, he even has the control ward in the other brush as well. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to be looking at Weibo with what they can do. Because look at the minimap. SOFM actually coming down through lane. Does have the Rift Herald up. So he's going to be able to get some gold on this. And if Hope walks too far forward, he will surely be dead. Blitzcrank is not the kind of champion that you want to toy with. Uh, Hope needs to be cautious because this tower isn't going to exist much longer. Can a barrage onto Huangfong here? Might be able to defend it. Angel now caught in the jungle here. Yagao low on mana though. Can't actually follow up too much. Will be Weibo escaping with their lives here. But crucially, thanks to that can of barrage, JDG defend the tower. Oh, I just Not for do much they. longer. Oh no, in comes Pantheon, locking them up. The Talia to follow up with the Infernum over everyone. Hope is down, missing force to flee. And Weibo back on top of the bottom side. We finally got to see the combo that we were talking about. Grand Starfall plus Weaver's Wall. Very easy to close a ton of distance so quickly and find that numbers advantage. So Weibo starting to use those pick tools that, that they drafted in their comp to be able to just single members of JDG out and find leads through that. Yeah, great stuff from Weibo to answer back because I was I was getting a little nervous for them, I have to be honest. With the way that JDG had been so proactive in the early game, didn't feel like we were seeing the same from Weibo, but now managing to find themselves a, an important skirmish there. Crucially, four plates, even if they didn't finish the tower, still a lot of gold into Huangfong's pocket. You can see he's finished his mythic now, got that Gale Force online. And they have a minor gold lead. Let's take another look at that uh, Weaver's Starfall, we'll call it. Yeah, and I, I love how they hone in on both of them coming in at the same time. It just sets up Pantheon stun into the Seismic Shove. Just great combo. Talia loves being put with point-and-click CC to guarantee that the damage comes through. And Weibo able to find it and keep up this pressure. Even get Swanfong straight to the Gale Force for his involvement in the kill as well. Really good stuff to see Wong Fong stacked up with an item already on that Aphelios. Crucial in a matchup against Kalista Renata, right? Where the, the lane pressure is meant to be so difficult to deal with. But so far, doing a good job of just withstanding that early game storm. Still no plates taken by the side of JDG. Whereas obviously with the help of the Herald, uh, four plates down in favor of Wong Fong. Across the rest of the map, does feel still fairly even. It's only a 400 gold lead, but JDG looking for a second Drake here. And I think they should be able to get it because Angel was actually hovering up towards the top side, which gave Yagal the ability to push in the wave <laughs> as they both try to go for a cheeky one. I thought really he was going to flash over that, honestly. <laughs> no way. But look look at SLFM's cooldown. His Grand Starfall's almost up on the table once again, but heck, they might not even need it. JDG looking to be the aggressors. Yeah, they're just going to walk in here. Huangfong red and white, though. I don't know if that's a fight that JDG really want for themselves on Force to flash away once again. Surprised to see he's not using Hex Flash. Yeah, you're right. Definitely not going towards that one. So not wanting to look for the, not being able to look for those cheeky opportunities, but. Oh, no. oh, hope. All hope is lost for the AD carry on JDG. I mean, what do you do when your flash isn't available? I feel like he's regretting not running cleanse this game. 
What you do is you uh, pray Perish. that doesn't happen, wait for objectives to go down until we get to the phase of the game where you just permanently group up as five and stare at each other, and then that won't be as big of a deal. Uh, Kanavi trying to get onto Huangfeng. That cannon barrage doing so much to deny Huangfeng's movement. Everfrost, it, there's just nowhere he can go. Take it down, Kanavi with a kill, but Yagao has more on the plate here. Looking for On as well. Wants to grab both. And once again, JDG and Sabach. I feel like we're watching a boxing match here. Punch after counterpunch. Yep, the rumble in the jungle coming on through is uh, missing. Actually, might look for that himself. But I loved, uh, you know, Yagao knowing, hey, like uh, the Aphelios is trapped in here. I can go straight for the Blitzcrank and guaranteeing and making sure they get the two kills. On the opposite side, though, the Shy has been having a field day. 30 CS up so yeah. far. This turret's almost gone. And just continuing to show that lane prowess that we know the Shy for. During that time, we can see SOFM picked up the second Herald. We've hit on it. Has more HP on this patch. So it feels I'm more just, guaranteed that you can look for those two charges. I'm just going to say, Lyric, the Shy running airy, probably has Scorch. 369 running Corrupting Pot. The Shy is winning through the power of patch 1214. He may not be on Azir. But damn it, it's the same change that he's abusing here. Really good stuff to see the Shy dominating the top lane as per usual. No solo kills just yet, though. It's Kanavi. I mean, we all witnessed what happened here. Catabrush, the, the, the true counter to Aphelios. Yeah, the, I think the, the most important thing in this play was the timing, right? Like, Kanavi was waiting in that brush for like 20 seconds, waited until he knew the recall from Pantheon probably came off, and then looked for the engage. So. Kind of nice abuse of a small window that the enemy team wouldn't expect you to have to be able to pick up that kill. And now we've kind of hit this dichotomy, right, of where Weibo have been prioritizing the gold lead sitting 1k up, but JDG comfortably on two dragons so far and <laughs> on the prowl. Oh, no. Weaver's Wall available here, but Angel in all kinds of trouble. Weaver's Wall going to be used oh! on the job from Yagao. Knocks him straight off the wall. What a shot there. And rewarded with their kill. 2, 0, and 3. Six stacks on the Dark Seal now. Yagao is having a field day. Oh, a hook from missing as well. It's going to be an exhaust, but no more follow. -up. I do got to say, Weibo at least found something elsewhere. The Shy able to pick up that turn on top side. I feel like 3, 6, 9, not only respecting the 1v1, but knowing like, Hey, my whole team is on the bottom half of the map. Just go for the recall, back up, give up the turret. It's going to go down anyway. But Weibo at least able to keep up the pressure on the map. Certainly are. Is on. Not having the greatest game on this blitz. <laughs> oh, no. Yagao. He's going to be caught in place here. There's nowhere for him to go. The stun into the stun into the stun into the death here. Nice pickup from Weibo. And I have to say, the proactivity on this Pantheon, I am loving. Yeah, so if any time the ultimate's up, he looks for the opportunity to go in. I also like that he did opt just into going to the, the, the normal Gore Drinker out because it feels like in this composition, he, if we get into skirmishes right, he's going to be the one having to be that frontline role and kind of absorb a lot of this damage. So making sure he can survive in these extended fights uh, is the way to go. And even kind of looking across the board, just overall for Weibo, such a good setup to be able to go in. Rocket Bell in top side, Gale Force for the Aphelios, look for the Moonlight Vigil. Your two other uh, carries Ooh, able to jump Angel's in. Angel's trouble, 369 wants a solo kill. He's not going to find it there. A lot of burn going on right there, but 369 uses his flash, uses his ult, answered by the flash of Angel. Overall, 369 still showing why he why he's been so feared on this GP. He has one pentakill officially on the books. Has another unofficial pit to kill this split as well on the GP. Yeah, he's a monster. The nerf does not matter to him. 0, zero 3 so far. Yagao slightly wide on the charm this time. We'll have to back away. As the Herald comes in in the mid lane, should finish that. Sow off! No! Oh, 1 HP. But a single auto will do that. So, uh, Weibo not going to be too concerned about that one as they start the Drake off. Here we go. 5v5. Everyone's here. Yagao behind enemy lines using the hex gates here. On needs to be cautious, needs to buy space for his team. Big ulti across the team from Wobbong. And Angel's actually locked up. It's going to be a kill onto Angel as the Shy goes in. Slicing Maelstrom rips JDG apart. Now time for cleanup. SFM buying space on the front line. Huang Fong needs to clean up. Needs to get onto Hope here. Big damage on Kanavi. Huang Fong, red and white, needs to turn it around. On flashes out oh. safety here. Huang Fong in trouble and taken down. The spears pierce the heart of Weibo. 
Hope completely showing up, turning the fight around. Overall from JDG, a lot of great things in that fight, and it's going to lead them to this Drake. Unless some cheeky shenanigans from on can make things happen. But up against the Rend, up against the Kalista, I don't think that should work. Yeah, surely, surely not. Uh, Hope is getting kind of low. These dragons are hard to kill, and this is a Hextech Drake. Look at the health bars on. Go for it, man. Please make the play. Use the blast code. Oh, oh my oh. God. It was a pixel away. A singular pixel away. Yes, yes. Oh, my God. My heart almost stopped right there if he would have done that. It would have just it would have just overwritten everything JDG just did, but we're going to see here Yagao coming off onto the flank and missing with the flash handshake to bring Angel in. And then look at that hostile takeover. Gets two members, but zones the other two away. The Shy does his best to try to find something back with the slicing maelstrom able to come through, but then Hope able to skirt around the fight. The fact that Kanavi is able to survive for so long with that Gore Drinker, with the ultimate pop, really just buys space for Hope to be able to flash in there, get the Q off, and just keep stacking up spears for the Ren. And another great charm from Yagao, right? I think I've seen him miss one so far this game. He's been so on point on this Ari. I will say, Without the Shy's ult, though, that was a very one-sided fight for JDG. Yes. The Shy nearly flipping everything around. That ult was massive. And you can see the build, right? Just pure magic pen coming out from the Shy. So the damage will be off the charts. Missing needs to find those exhausts early on in the play to stop the Shy taking over. Yeah. But also, shout out to Missing. Missing playing that fight overall. Handshake into the ultimate to, to do so much zoning. So, yeah, as long as you can keep playing fights like that and get that exhaust down, like you're saying will be very nice for the side of JDG. Now, JDG, I mean, on soul point and just having so much power across the board. And like we said, champions like Blitzcrank, I mean, you're always useful because one hook could always turn into something. But at the same time, when you're behind, you don't really offer too much more than just hoping you can kind of cheesily pull someone in to all five members of your team. And crucially, a lot of the time, when you're behind, pulling someone in isn't necessarily a good thing. If you hit, like, Kanavi, for example, that actually could lose you the game. Like, he he wants to be in the middle of you. Just block, uh, pops his ult out and uh, takes over the situation. JDG grouping up in the mid lane here. They really want to force something missing using the battle song. But Weibo will back away. This should just be the tier one taken by the side of JDG here. They have the counter minion to tank that tower up. We'll find a tier one. Here we go. Oh. The Weaver Starfall as SFM in the middle of everyone. Kanavi knocks him deeper into the play as well. The stun comes out. There's no follow-up from the rest of Weibo. They can't get into the play. I mean, SFM completely regretting his decision. The fact that Kanavi able to get in front of him and knock him back. I mean, what could the other members of Weibo do? Just feels like he was he was in too deep. I'm, I'm even surprised Weibo were, were willing to look for that play in the first place, considering how far behind, like, Quan Fong on and the Shy would be to where, you know, Angel and SOFM could land. Yeah, really uh, aggressive ultimate from SOFM. You could see Angel using the Weaver's Wall as well, like considering going in, but I guess they decide that this just isn't the play. Maybe wanting to do that before the tower was down, but not working out for them in the end in SOFM. Uh, gonna be sacrificed by the rest of the team. Yeah. That's and the thing about Pantheon, right? Once you're in, there's not really any getting out. Yeah, and even the Cannon Barrage, right? Doing so much to zone off the other members. Even if they could join through, they would have to tank all that damage. And I think Angel was kind of smart to realize, like, hey, maybe I shouldn't keep following this wall through because then it would have just been two members going down the side of Weibo rather than just one. Okay, Yaga up to the top lane. I feel like the side lane play from JDG is really strong this game as well, right? You've got the Akalista to sit in the mid lane, and you have an Ari and a GP that can just sit and push side lanes, get that pressure out. Yagao has TP for the Drake that's coming up in a minute's time. And I'm a little nervous here. I'm going to be honest for Weibo because now losing that gold lead that they focused on all through the early game and JDG on Soul Point with the buffed up Hextech uh, Drakes as well. This feels dicey for the side of Weibo. They're not even going to have the three item of Elios. No, it's going to be rough, especially because we hit on like GP, took some hits early, but got some like decent but hit uh, buff slate your passive now the scales with crit your barrel slows now scale with crit the barrel damage overall late the base damage got increased but some of the bonus damage or crit did get taken away so you know it is a little back and forth uh in terms of like the buffs and the nerfs but overall gp 
could feel just a lot stronger right now, especially look at 369's items as a collector. Oh, on pulling someone in, flashing out immediately. That's kind of barrage down. Trying to figure out whether that's worth it or not. Kanavi chunked here. The Shite needs to be the man you're keeping your eyes on, though, in this fight. If he flashes in, if he gets a Maelstrom, it could be massive. Yeah, again, we're going to keep our eyes on him. Has the Flash available, has Rocket Belt as well. So has the ability to get on top of JDG's backline. And it feels like Hope has to be the priority target for the side of Weibo. But Yagao kind of marking the shy, keeping him from being able to find yeah. the flank. And it feels like the, the cannon has to be the difference maker. He certainly does. Has Flash, has Proto Belt, can get into the play. Missing needs to find that exhaust. Here we go. Drake just going to be started. Weaver's Wall used as Weibo try and move in. We're just going to 50-50. This one, Hope takes it, though. And a massive Renata ult. Weibo in full retreat. But the Shy goes in. Gets onto 369. Massive damage across the team. And now a chance for Weibo to turn things around. In comes the Skyfall. 369 in trouble. Oh. But SFM gets one shot. And one Funk trying to finish it off. Double kill on the Aphelios. Three for two, but a soul for JDG. Yeah, JDG definitely walking out happy as the victors with the fact that they do get the Hextech soul. SOFM, my God. Where'd he go? Where'd he go, Munch? I do not know. I need to see that moment again in slow-mo. As uh, Angel started it all. I can't believe the two teams just 50 50 this. I mean, we see Kanavi uses the ult to, to get the knockback. And then they start running forward. But like you hit on the shy, the fact that he gets on the back line. I mean, look how low 369 hope and the other members are taking. Angel as well, able to get some of that nice AoE down. And like, <laughs> what was that? It was like 40% HP. 369 just destroyed him with the collector as well. Uh, oh, in a bit of trouble here, but I think he'll be okay. I think he'll get away with his life for the time being. It's a two, no, not even. 1,000 gold lead. For JDG, we're still damn close in this one. And Huang Fong is coming online. Now, three items on that Aphelios. Not got an Infinity Edge just yet, though. So still needs some time before he's fully going to do the damage that you want from him. But the Shire as well, you know, doing a lot in these fights. Does feel very tense between the two teams. I said, even with the Soul, I'm not sure I can count Weibo out. Oh, no, definitely not. I definitely, like, JDG should be able to take this. Should be able to win fights as we've seen, but I mean, Weibo have a ton of AOE damage coming out between Talia, Kennen, and the and the Aphelio. So JDG group up a little bit too close together. You land a seismic shove into a Moonlight Vigil with the Shy sitting on top of everyone. I mean, that could just be all of JDG going down. Also, a singular Blitz prank book, right? Could change the game, especially if Hope gets caught on just toying with him. The fancy footwork, except he doesn't even have feet on this skin. Silences everyone, is in trouble though. Taken down, punished for his arrogance here. The Shy with a big slicing maelstrom. Is it enough though? Yagao oh. survives. And there's no follow up whatsoever from Weibo. Overstepping from the top laner and the support. Sadly, JG not able to find more off the hostile takeover. Feels like that could have been huge, but now gonna try and look for the Baron. Weibo having some members to try to defend. SOFM's up. He does have Smite available on top of the Grand Starfall. Yeah, has his ultimate. Angel going to use his Weaver's Wall to join the fray here. Very aggressive play. A charm in from Yagao. Everfrost onto Huangfeng. Big damage out from this Ari. Huangfeng is sent packing. In the meantime, Baron is going down. Kanavi's going to be able to finish that one off. On too late to the play. Baron taken. JDG, they're going to take the game here, aren't they? They find one onto the support. They're looking for Angel as well. They're looking for SOFM. They're looking for chase down picks. Angel will fall. A double for Kanavi, who has been in command of this game from start to finish. And JDG can just keep looking to control the pace. They're going to push in. 369 is TP as well. He's actually TPing to the top wave. So they, they're trying to get pressure on multiple fronts of the map and should be able to knock down quite a few of these structures. Don't know if they, they could get an inhibitor, but seems like they're going to be angling for it. I think they can. Still 20 seconds until Angel's back on the map here. They've got the damage. They've got the barrened up cannons. And there goes the mid inhib as well. So a lot of control now in favor of JDG. We were talking about how close the gold was. Well, it's 8,000 now in favor of JDG. They're in a pretty good spot. And I mean, just looking across the board, right? Randuin's Black, Cleaver, Hexdrinker, Bill for Kanavi, Wits End now coming out for Hope. Just like a lot of resistances on their side. Because when you look at a lot of uh, Weibo's damage, it's indexed into Burst. And we can see here, 
uh, JDG with the commanding position. <laughs> they, they pretty much just run the Blitzcrank down. And then Kanavi able to get the slow, which they can then chain into the charm to make sure the shy goes down as well. And there we hit on. There was the hostile takeover. But luckily, yeah. Angel, because he has the unspeeled spell book, was able to turn to the cleanse, be able to get out of that one. So not yeah. able to find more off of it. But the Baron, uh, you know, probably a probably an all right reward. Probably okay. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's all right. It's, it's not bad for Jack. And an inhib as well. Why not? Why you not? Know? You know, yeah. treat yourself. So treat okay. yourself. Saturday. Better, but is treat day, as they say. <laughs> um, it's, I will say, you've been talking about Hornfong, you know, I, I've been saying how he's getting close to his Infinity Edge, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, like you're saying in the fights, though, with missing, uh, with JDG, uh, with JDG, with 369's ultimates as well, it feels impossible for Hornfong to ever move forward and get damage down. No, right? I mean, what Cannon Brush does to a mobile carries is just completely stops them in their tracks. And especially with JDG, again, look how... how much defensive itemization they've gone towards. It's sort to take them down. 369 now, even having a Guardian Angel on top of it. I feel like they, they just do so well in these like extended standoffs now. And sure, they might not have like a ton of poke coming out through their sides, but one barrel chain from 369 could just set JDG up to take a turret. Oh, a hook on to 369. Speak of the devil right there. Pulled in, half his health gone, but not really the end of the world. They can't find a pick off of it. Like you say, the barrel damage is big. Kanavi chunked as well. There is a lot of poke coming out from Weibo, honestly, but oh my days. Not as much as there is from JDG. No, but still, JDG going to pay the respect and back off because Elder coming up in 12 seconds. JDG have complete vision control all over the bottom side of the map so far, but this just this doesn't <laughs> feel like an objective you can give up if you're Weibo. Are you ready for the Pantheon Starfall Steel <laughs> on the Elder Dragon? I certainly am. Let's see what SFM has up his sleeves. 369 playing to zone here, but doesn't quite connect onto the Shy. 10k on that Elder Dragon. Remember, it is tankier than it was before. SFM moving in. Great can of barrage onto everybody. On low. Yagao over the wall here. Everfrost onto Wonfong. He cleanses, trying to keep himself alive. Doing damage onto Yagao here. Keep your eyes on Wonfong. He's got to turn this play, but he's alone. He's abandoned by his team. They're taken down. And JDG, they've made this game look easy. I love that JG don't go for the 50-50. They know they can win the fight, and they just completely wipe Wavo off the map. And I love that. Not flipping the Elder, right? Going for the fight. Baiting Wavo out of the base and using it to go for the play. Not risking anything. JDG looking clean in game number one. This was great, Munch. We had aggression. We had fights. Oh, yeah. We had Pantheon Blitzcrank. We had it all deliver in this one LPL game. And JDG, I mean, they might go through some trials and tribulations in terms of losses. Obviously, like, like we hit on, they lost to RNG the other day, but still, JDG are a team that you can't count out. JDG are a team who, especially once we get the best of fives, I'm like really excited to see yeah. because they feel like a team that like can drop games against any of our other top teams. Like if Weibo comes back in game two, it won't be surprising, but can also just have these games where once they find a foothold, because they are just constantly pushing forward for vision for picks, they can just round out games so nicely like they did here. And I feel like the, there's a couple of candidates for MVP on this one. Like, obviously, 369 looking fantastic. His ultimates were incredible. Kanavi really, like, getting the ball rolling early on. And I feel like MVP will go to one of those two players. But honestly, the Renata ultimates coming out from missing were so crucial during those team fights. And Yagao, his charms were so good throughout this game. Like, yeah. He was the one that set up that initial play for Kanavi to build his snowball off of. I feel like that though, I, would, I just want to shout out those two players because they won't get the MVP, but they were crucial for this game. To where there's right, definitely top teams where it feels like you're honing in on the one player. Like we look at like past seasons of like top esports with with, with Knight. It feels like this JDG roster is just so solid across the board and that like really in their wins everyone comes online and everyone has like a huge impact on what they're able to do and they're just so such like an individually <laughs> mechanically talented team it makes sense is my you god know, i had a feeling i had a feeling the shy would top the damage numbers even though they're losing i mean so many fights he was just in the middle of everyone all of just weibo's just damage like dialing. look angel out damaging it gal juan falling out damaging hope just across the board they were able to find the damage but jdg were able to find the impactful kills and objectives JDG just had more health, I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> somehow managing to survive all of that damage coming out from Weibo. It's not often that you see that, is it? Like, every single lane out damaging their opponent but still losing the game. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. 
like even the Blitzcrank, right? The only the only out damage play for the side of JDG is actually Kanavi. Yeah, and not by a significant margin. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Either way, JDG, a phenomenal win hit. And I, I just want to highlight once again that we're talking about both of these teams kind of leveling up since 2020, growing, changing slightly, but keeping their core players. But JDG, I feel like, are a totally different team. Even though some of the players are the same, like... The way that this team plays is so much more entertaining, honestly, just from a <laughs> sheer fan perspective. Like, I love watching this new version of JDG where they just go in, they force fights, they're so decisive, and they're just so good. Yeah, and right, uh, it's not even just like blind aggression either. Like, they're getting their vision down, they're pushing as a unit, just everything's coming together cohesively. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to jump into a break. We'll find out what Weibo have in store in the draft for game number two because Pantheon.